And so today, I'm going to be talking about touch tools. It's a system of touch gestures that aims to mimic real world tool addresses. So this scene here should look pretty familiar to everyone. Conventional touch gestures rely primarily on cording of the fingers. One finger panning, two finger pinching, three finger swiping, and so on. But our fingers and hands are capable of a whole lot more than your simple pink poking and pinching. So for example, let's look at how you would change mode of a typical touch-based interface. Somewhere there's a toolbar, which you can use to switch between mode and tool. But this, uh, this seems kind of silly. You know, why do you use a toolbar when our hands have so many modes of expression? In the real world, we use a really wide variety of graphs to hold our tools. Graphs are really diverse. They co-evolved they, they co with a huge array of tools that humans have developed over the millennia. And people are pretty good at using tools. Indeed, this is a characteristic of humans that sets us apart from most other creatures. So we set out to design a touch gesture set inspired by the graphs people use to wield their tools. So now people have been studying gestures for quite a long time. Here you can see a selection of representative gestures from past literature. But in general, these approaches tend to either model, model abstract shapes or they count fingers, rather than modeling more concrete hand grasps. Now, touch tools aims to provide an easy, intuitive way for users to summon virtual tools using grasp-based touch gestures. Users replicate the hand grasp of a physical tool on the touch screen as if they were holding the physical tool, and an analogous virtual tool will be summoned. Now, to develop our touch tools gesture vocabulary, first we needed to figure out what tools would translate well to a touch environment. So we, we asked a group of HCI students to brainstorm tools that we use at least once a year. The students named a total of 72 tools, of which 18 had compelling interactive uses. From this initial set of 18 tools, we sought to identify a subset that would work best with a planar sensing of a standard touch screen. Because our gestures had to work with standard, with standard existing touchscreen hardware, some tools could not be effectively sensed. So as an example, we can't sense scissors because the desired grasping motion would not be in plane with the touchscreen, but rather above the screen. And some other tools use identical graphs, and therefore they could be distinguished from each other on touchscreen. For example, a pen is held using the same precision graph as a scalpel. But we did know that certain tools are allowed to be unphysical, that is, break physical laws, when they're transferred to the virtual world. Users can forgive such virtual tools that break physical laws as long as that makes sense. For example, a virtual camera can actually take pictures of the screen despite being in the same plane as the screen. Ultimately, we ended up choosing seven tools that fit these criteria. Whiteboard eraser, pen, tape measure, rubber eraser, camera, mouse, and magnifying glass. In combination with one finger pan and two finger pinch, this is a total of nine gestures for a prototype system. So after picking our seven tools, we need to see how users would actually replicate those tools on a touch screen. So we ran a short study. Users were asked to grasp each physical tool and then replicate that grasp on an iPad. So from this data, we established that users held our tools in relatively consistent manner. And that's good for us because that means we can really use a set of a distinct gesture for each, uh, each tool. We used that collected data as well to train our classifier later on. Here you can see some typical touch patterns for each tool. OK, so for those of you who did not get to see uh, our demonstration of interactivity yesterday, I can do a quick live demo. I've got an iPad set up here. Uh, so I've got an iPad set up here. Um, you can see if I use one finger, move around, two fingers, pinch. Now if I use a tripod grasp, three fingers, kind of like this, to hold the pen, I do that on the touch screen. There you go, hold on, I get the pen. And if I can use a slightly wider graph, something I use to hold the eraser, for example, now maybe I want to measure, sort of, in a CAD application, maybe I want to measure how big something is, I can use a tape measure. Like that. Measure about you know, four inches wide. Um, and then we'll probably take a picture. 
picture of it, like a fully camera. Uh, in a lot of applications, we need very, very precise pointing, very precise uh, manipulation. We have a tool that's very good for that on desktop, the mouse, by the mouse. Do <coughs> selection, very small selection. You can see actually that, that selection is much more smaller than my fingers would ever do, and much more precise than my fingers would ever do. But we can do all of this using no additional hardware, using no additional uh, toolbars or anything, only just to find and uh, uh, finally, you can erase everything. So, there you go, just a bit of a taste of the special. Okay. So, now I'll just briefly discuss how touch tools actually works. So, after that initial contact occurs, we wait about 100 milliseconds for the entire gesture to appear. Then we obtain the position and estimated contact area for each touch point in the gesture. So here you can see, for example, you can see my big thumb and four small fingers. If the gesture only contains one or two points, we automatically classify that as a pan and pinch gesture. Otherwise, we compute four sets of data on the touch points. Touch contact areas, pairwise distances between each pair of points, uh, distances to the center of the, of the gesture, and angles between adjacent pairs to the center. These features are used, uh, and then we compute a series of statistical features on these touch data. These features are used as inputs to a seven class support vector machine trained on the touch data from the touch study. And that classifier outputs a tool type and the appropriate virtual tool, instantiated and applied. And finally, we perform a quick evaluation to test the performance of touch tools. Participants were given a few minutes to familiarize themselves with the gesture study. They were then asked to replicate one of nine gestures. Pan, zoom, and the seven tools, three times each in random order. Of the 162 trials we collected this way, there were seven errors total for an overall accuracy of 96%. Now, we observed that three of those seven errors were due to the user actually recalling the wrong tool apparently, rather than a system misclassification. So we think that with a few more minutes with the, with the system, the users could achieve easily a high 90% accuracy. Thanks. <laughs>